Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, okay, let's see. I hope you can see the slides and everything. Uh, today we're going to talk about speeding up kernel development with, with VermiNG. Um, I don't know how, how, I'm probably asking questions to the audience already. Like how many of you are already familiar with VermiNG? Can you try to raise the hand in the, so that we can also test if this thing is working? No one, no one familiar or, or I don't see the <laughs> raise hand. There are two people that raise okay. their hand. I think that my number might go up. <laughs> yes, it is going <laughs> okay. up. No, that's good. That's if you're not familiar, that's good. It means that the, this talk has a purpose. So as uh, like, yeah, this is a talk, but is going to be it's supposed to be very interactive. So if you feel free to interact me anytime or ask questions through the Q&A at this was announced um and uh yeah so let's see um okay i need to show these uh the disclaimer i uh, that's my personal views they don't reflect uh, the position of nvidia i work for nvidia um so virtbng is not a project uh, sponsored by nvidia at least not yet i'm working on it uh it's mostly a project that i started to do in my free time uh, and uh, so I I will do a little introduction about the tool, starting from the very basics. Uh, not not too basic, but uh, I mean, want to give you a little uh, history of the project, uh, and uh, yeah, how I I became kind of the, the maintainer, and then we're gonna see how it works, uh, and uh, um, what what can you do. So I prepare like a, a lot of uh, practical examples, so hopefully it. It will be like more entertaining and less boring. Um, and but yeah, the, the whole scope for this talk is to help you, especially newcomers or, or new uh, kernel developers, help to lower the barrier of kernel development. That is this kind of recently is a little bit of my, my mission on that. Uh, and, uh, and for those that are expert kernel developers, uh, I mean, you can, uh, if you're not, if you don't know the tool already, uh, you can consider to try it and see if it helps to, to speed up your, your workflow. Uh, because one thing that I notice among like other fellow kernel developers is that we all used to have our own set of scripts and tools. And um, sometimes we don't share exactly our typical workflow and we lack kind of a standard tool to do kernel testing. Um, so yeah, let's start with what is VertMeNG. Again, that's from the website of the GitHub page. Oh, maybe we can share the, the GitHub page in the chat if it's not already. That, that's it. Yes, thank you, Candice. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a tool to quickly build and run kernels inside a virtualized snapshot of your live system. What it means is that typically, uh, when you compile a kernel uh, and you want to test it, you can either test on a bare metal, like you deploy something uh, as a distro on a bare metal, you install the custom kernel, reboot, and see how it goes. Uh, or you can prepare, you can deploy a virtual machine, install the kernel in the virtual machine, and test the kernel. I started doing both ways. Actually, when I started to do kernel development, I was testing the kernel on the same system that I was using to do development, that was kind of dangerous because if something goes wrong, you may corrupt the file system or crash the system. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I corrupted the file system multiple times at that time because uh, virtualization wasn't that popular. Uh, we were speaking about like around 2002, 2003. Um, and then, yeah, I started to use virtual machines, but with virtual machines, it's a lot better, but there's still time needed, you know, to redeploy the VM, uh, build the kernel, deploy the kernel inside the VM, either via packaging or copying the files and whatnot. Um, so what VertBNG is doing instead is to start a, a QMU instance, it's just QMU uh, with some options, 
and it what it does it it basically mount uh, the the host file system inside the guest in read only mode so you see your whole file system that you have in your host you see exactly the same in the guest and then it uses some overlay fs so that it allows you to do writes all the writes are ephemeral by default it means that they they're happening but they everything goes in ram so you're not actually changing the files into the guest but but you can do any kind of writes you can install packages you can possibly delete files and whatever but as soon as you stop the instance everything goes back to normal so it's more like of a way to fork your system and create like an eph ephemeral clone of your system where you can play around and do all your testing with any arbitrary kernel. It can be a kernel that you just recompile, it can be a kernel that, uh, a stock kernel for a distro or a kernel that you download from uh, a package. So this project is derived from Vertme. Vertme was the original project uh, uh, created by Andy Lutomirsky. So big, big kudos to, to Andy for starting the project. Uh, and, and I was using that. I was an uh, epi user of, of Virtme. I was using on a daily basis. And the problem is that it was lacking a lot of features that I needed. And uh, it, it it wasn't maintained. Like it, it, there was the source code on GitHub, but not maintained. So yeah, I remember at some point I had like, like I don't know, a 20, more than 20 pull requests on the GitHub page and they were not applied, not considered. So I, yeah, I wrote an email to Andy and, and I asked like, can I, can I fork the project or can, can I take over? And he was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. And, uh, and that, that's the beauty of open source. You know, if you, if you really need something and even if it's unmaintained, you can, you know, you can take the project and contribute and publish your own changes. And, and then people started to use my version. So I, actually change the version to uh, change the name to me and G like many other projects they add the, the N dash ng suffix and that's how I became maintainer like of this of this project uh, basically just because I started to contribute and people started to use my my version um okay so any any questions so far that's just basic basic uh, information. So what okay, what is not with me and G? The tool is explicitly designed to be a tool for kernel developers. So it's very much designed for testing. Uh, if you are if you want to run services or uh, I don't know, applications as like a production application inside with me and G, technically you can, but it, it's not designed to do that. It's not like Libvirt, Incus, or Docker. It's not a, a virtualization manager. Um, and again, it's not a platform to run service or VMs. There are other tools to do that. So again, wh why why to use Virtme and G then? Well, because you know, as development, doing development, we need to do tests. We need to test the changes that we do. Uh, testing kernels is painful and slow. Uh, usually we are lacking the fast edit compiled cycle that we have uh, in a, um, with, with user space application. You know, with user space application, we usually change some code, we compile and we run the application. That's something that we don't have with the kernel because there's a whole install and rebooting. And if there's a crash, we need to reboot again. Um, so the, the goal of VirtmeNG is more to provide these, these fast iter iteration cycles with kernel development. Uh, and also this is a little more ambitious uh, goal is to, to, to be like, it, it would be nice if more people will start using VirtmeNG and it will become, I don't know, a kind of a standard tool for uh, doing, to do kernel development. Uh, and we're actually, Heading toward that direction, I'm happy to know this. Like I was a a plumber uh, two weeks ago at Kernel Recipes last week, uh, and it's I was impressed by how many people are 
already using this uh, uh, project and for their regular uh, kernel development activity. And also for the CI CD, like a lot of, uh, like the net dev, Linux net dev moved to VMNG in their CI and projects like Matter for, for GNOME or, um, I, I, I was really happy to see that like many CI CD uh, uh, infrastructures are actually based on, are actually using VMNG. SCADEX also, I'm also part of the SCADEX team. If you heard about SCADEX, uh, is a new technology in the Linux kernel that allows to uh, implement your own scheduler in BPF. We massively use VirtMeNG in our CI CD, like to quickly recompile a kernel and test like all the BPF schedulers that, that we have. So, so um, Andre, yes. uh, for people that don't, aren't familiar with CI CD, um, it's just so that it's a continuous integration and conti yeah, continuous deployment, I think that's, the world so okay yeah Sorry. yeah yeah. thank you <laughs> just wanted no, to no, know no. i don't know who, if people are familiar who, who <laughs> better the shua can can <laughs> do a definition of, of cicd yes absolutely um yeah it's basically testing you know when you do a change and you run a bunch of tests and make sure that you didn't break anything uh that's that's basically the idea about uh, the uh, continued integration testing so, okay, all that said, all the introduction, how does it work in practice? Well, it's it's nothing special. With me and G is not rocket science. It's just a script. It's a Python script uh, around QMU. So the core is actually QMU. Uh, and the Python script is just to make, you know, to, to give a better user experience. With QMU, you need to pass like a ton of different options. Uh, with me and G is helping you to do that. And it, of course, there's also uh, a lot of other logic to uh, create the, the illusion that you're using the host by exporting the file system that it's in your host inside the guest. Um, and there's, there's the overlay FS part. And, and then the, there are other things. So there are like actually this, there are this Python script on top of QMU, but inside QMU, it also runs what is called a, a virtmeng init. Not sure if you can see the pointer, but it, it's the last bullet point. This is a custom init. Uh, so it's not systemd based. There's a custom init uh, written in Rust. It's written in Rust just because I wanted to learn Rust. There's <laughs> no particular reason, but it ended up being a good choice. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, that's so why, why a custom init? Uh, well, basically, mostly for uh, speed. Like it, it boots really fast, and I will show you later. We can really boot fast, and in the context of testing, being able to boot faster is quite important. So let me see in chat. Uh, there are some questions. If the host that have not a specific hardware, let's say a new hardware not available yet, uh, can we use it to test the kernel driver for the hardware? So. Yeah, that's one of the things. Like, uh, if you if you if you need to do some test with specific hardware, of course you need the hardware. So it, it depends. If you can bypass, if you can access the hardware from the guest, then you can definitely you can you can possibly use with me and G. Uh, so there there are for example there are people that are using with me and G to test webcam like actual physical webcams uh, with different kernels. And what they do, they they run VirtBNG with different kernels and they do like USB, the kind of USB pass through so they, they can see the actual hardware via USB. And that's how, uh, yeah, that's how they, they can actually test the hardware. Uh, so the, the kernel inside the guest will actually use the driver inside the guest with the hardware of the host, like the real hardware. Um, so why did one, you choose Rust? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. I was going to say uh, for people posting questions, could you please post it to everyone? Um, because um, so others can see the question as well. Okay. Thanks. That's nice. Yeah. I, I think, I guess I see all the questions, right? <laughs> you, yeah, you can because you're okay. the host. <laughs> so <laughs> so okay, thank yeah, there, you. There was, 
Yeah, okay, there was a question, why, why did you choose Rust? Uh, no particular reason, initially, but just, just because I wanted a project to learn Rust. At that time, I didn't know Rust, I wanted to learn it, and I decided to use Rust. Then it, it actually ended up being a good choice. Uh, so the initial init was actually a bash script, uh, and it was, it was nice. It's still there, like there's still the option to use the bash init. Um, and it's actually used if you want to run a VNG instance, a weird VNG instance uh, for a different architecture. Because in that case, I uh, in the like in the official package, I don't cross compile weird VNG in it for all the architectures. Uh, I could and at some point. I, I will I will figure out a way to ship like the 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 whole range of, of binaries for all the architectures. But right now, if you do a, like a cross architecture test, uh, you end up booting with the bash script and not the weird and genie. Um, so yeah, that's that's the but 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 if you use the weird and genie, if you use the Rust one, it's a lot faster. Um, and I, I'll show you some numbers. Um, so that that's the overview of how the uh, file system is exported. There's the host file system. It uses Virta UFS. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. It's basically a file. I have a slide later, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. But uh, it can either use Virta UFS or Dyn PFS. These are two file systems designed to share directories from the host into the guest, into the virtual machine. Uh, and what I export is basically the whole file system inside the guest. And of course, I need to, to do some tricks here uh, in order to allow writes, because uh, this one is exported in read-only. And so I create overlays. Overlays means that I remount these directories, and you basically see the original content. But as soon as you try to write, all the delta, all the differences are actually stored in by in TM tempfs. So they're all ephemeral. Uh, you can rewrite etc, user, home, whatever. Um, everything will happen. All the changes will happen in RAM. So you're not compromising your host file system. But you can test whatever you want. And the feeling is that you're actually using uh, the host, and but with, with the kernel that you just recompiled. And yeah, so the cool thing about VirtIOFS, because initially, uh, VirtMe, like the old VirtMe was using 9PFS. That is the legacy way of sharing uh, files and directories from host into the guest. The problem with 9PFS is performance. It's like kind of a network protocol. So any IO operation goes through the whole network stack and it adds a lot of overhead, especially if you do lots of file system operations. Uh, what VirtIOFS does, it basically, uh, it uses Fuse, um, it's file system in user space, Fuse inside the guest, and Fuse is used only for the metadata, but the actual, the actual I.O. happens on the host using this VirtIOFSD daemon. So there's a program that runs on the host that is perform, that performs the actual I.O. So that, that's why the, the I.O. is faster. And uh, uh, mm -mm. as you can see here, so that's that should go in the VirtaUFS web, web page. So after we change from, we, we moved from 9PFS to VirtaUFS. So this is a tiny git diff uh, in the Linux source there. Before it was taking like, uh, how's that? It's like five minutes. It was taking five minutes to complete just a git diff because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of file system operations and everything is going through the 9PFS protocol. After we changed uh, the, the full file system to VirtaUFS, uh, so now it takes like 1.7 seconds. That is pretty much how long it takes to run the same command on the host. So before it was pretty much impossible to do file system testing or run tests that were stressing too much the file system in the guest. Now it's very close to do testing on the, uh, on the host because of VirtaUFS. Um, 
there's a question to everyone. Okay, so if I turn off the VM, do my change persist? No, they're lost. Uh, that's, the, that's the idea. By, uh, by default, all, all the changes that you do inside the guest, uh, you lose them. Uh, however, there is an option. You can do like dash dash uh, R, uh, RW and you, and you can pass RWD and you can pass multiple directories. And in those directories, you can do writes and keep the keep the changes like that. They're they will be persistent. Uh, but I usually I discourage to do that uh, because uh, so the thing is like you really the feeling is that you're really running inside your host. Sometimes it's difficult difficult to distinguish. And if you're the other thing is like if you're used to run with me and G and and do everything that you want. And at some point you export something in read write. Yeah, you need to pay attention <laughs> that it's read write. And so, so that potentially is dangerous, that, that's it. Uh, so yeah, not the default, uh, exactly. Not by default, you can have folders, correct. Uh, you have tested with which version of the kernel uh, is compatible with other versions. I'm not sure I understand the question, but you you can basically use any kernel. Any kernel you compile or any stock kernel in your distro or packages, even kernels from other distro. Uh, like people, uh, if, you, if you know Matter, the, the graphical thingy, uh, people in the Matter uh, team are using VirtMeNG to test the graphical environment in um, uh, using kernels from different distributions. So they use like the Fedora kernel, the Ubuntu kernel, the whatever, Arch Linux kernel. And I use VirtMeNG to start multiple sessions and test their own programs, applications with these uh, stock kernels from, from different distros. Um, they, don't, they don't recompile the kernel, they just take the binaries. When you say mounting root on guest, does it contain CSFS, PROCFS? Uh, no, so it, it doesn't contain CSFS and PROCFS. So all the special file systems are ex excluded. Uh, it's just the files, that just the files with the actual storage back in store. Uh, PROCFS and CSFS are remounted uh, by virtme and init, by the init script. When the system boots up uh, one of the tasks of virtme and it is to create like the CSFS, PROCFS, dev as well, and prepare the system to be usable. Okay, so yeah, that was, virt uh, okay, sorry, that was with the UFS. Another nice thing that uh, has been added, I added fairly recently, well, now it's probably one year, <laughs> so it's not, oh, not recent. Andre. Uh, sorry, yeah. there seemed to be another question in the Q and A. I don't know if you we caught that yet. And then there is one more question by Wander. Um, is there any way to specify in the command line a custom directory to show up as live modules? Uh, specify a kernel in the guest. So uh, okay, let me understand. You want to like. Uh, because I, I, I see what you're actually asking. So you're saying um, if, you, if, you are, if you're booting a kernel and the lib modules, you want to use the modules for that specific kernel. I, I think that's the question. Uh, and virtme and G is in general is smart enough to understand uh, like if you recompile a kernel in the current working directory, uh, it, it's able to figure figure out that you're using like a custom kernel and it is able to find the modules within the build the uh, path, the build tree. And what it does, it basically installs, automatically installs all the modules into a dot virt me ng, uh, dot virt, actually dot virt me directory. And it automatically creates um, a mount and a, and a sim link actually, uh, or it's not a sim link, it's actually a bind mount to lib modules and kernel kernel versions. So basically you can use the modules of the kernel that you just recompiled. So if even if you have external modules from inside the virtme ng uh, instance, 
and you see them in lib modules kernel version. In general, you can also potentially pass a directory and say mount this directory in um, an arbitrary any arbitrary uh, folder. Uh, actually, I didn't. Let me think about that because it's it's possible, but I don't think there's a um, an easy option to say I don't know. Uh, use I oh, know there there is is dash dash. Uh, I need to I need to check. That's something I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can share. Uh, let me share the the the, the console. So, so the context seemed to be the use case. Netfilter loads modules according to the protocol. I think that seemed to be the use case that. Yeah, that's the usually, person you, that's you, asking. You may, you may want that. Yes, yes. Uh, but let me see. I hope you can see my share. So that's the help. If we go to. Uh, uh, there was a dear. Uh, let's do less here. So with with this uh, R O D and R W D, you can pass arbitrary directories that will be mounted inside the guest, and the way that you specify them, you can. There is this syntax where you say you know uh, guest path and host path. So you can play around and say, okay, use this path on the host and automatically mount these using these different path path inside the guest. You can you can do things like I, you honestly I never use this stuff, but in, in theory you can. Uh, let me re go back to the slides. And we should be back to the slides. Uh, okay, let me see. Now I lost the chat. I also see the chat. Okay, uh, yeah, sure. I'll feel free to interrupt me if there are questions. Because I, I don't see the q and Oh, yes. Oh, I see okay. The there is one, one question in the Q&A. I see. Okay. Uh, so, let me and just share the file system with host. And if I'm using with me and G to do simple data path test, then the case testing binaries need to be on the host machine. And it might be the case that I'm able to do the testing. Someone who has different setup on the host machine might be able to do that. Uh, is it possible that VermiNG uses different root FS, which uh, is not shared with VermiNG? So, and, and, yeah, I'm trying to understand. Uh, okay, you, you can, there, okay, you can create an instance with VermiNG sharing like the entire Post file system, that's the default use case. But you can also say virt me and g dash dash root this path, and, and for example, that you can use that when you have like a chi root, like an entire file system inside a particular directory. You can pass that, and that will be used for as the root fs. Maybe that answer your question. And by the way, that's also the way that allows you to use with me to test uh, um, kernels or, or systems in general for different architectures. Let's say you have, you want to test an ARM64 or a RISC five kernel. You can like create a build your root with all the binaries and pass that as a root and that will be used at, at, as root FS inside is exported into the guest. That's because, like, otherwise it would be impossible to boot like a RISC five uh, kernel using the x eighty six binaries because it won't work. So, um, yeah, that's that that's the reason. Okay, let's see. Um, I see lots of questions in chat. Uh, can you have short folders shared as read write? Yes, I think I answered that. If you saw the, there's a dash dash uh, R O D and dash dash R W D. So that's the way you can pass like folders are read only or read write. Uh, you tested which version of the kernel? Oh, no, that I answered that already. Sorry. <laughs> um, Net filter loads module according to the protocol. Yeah, that's like. Um, that that's the way. I, yeah, I remember. I actually tracked uh, a regression 
try to remember there was a net filter regression at some point and uh, yeah i used i used vert ng to do the bisect but actually kernel bisect is one of the best use case for this tool it it really uh, helps you like cuz the it, it it allows you to build like a minimal kernel and also allows you to run the kernel so there's these dual tasks not sure if i mentioned earlier but uh, I think I had a slide at the beginning. Maybe I skipped that. Uh, yeah, whatever. But but basically, there's also uh, you can use that to do like build a kernel, and what it does, it creates like a very minimal kernel um, that only contains like it also generates a config a dot config for you, so you don't have to play with the if you have a com dot config, fine, you build the kernel regularly. But if you just git clone a kernel and you like what like, let me generate a minimal config, you can do like VNG dash dash build and it will build a minimal uh kernel for you. It's really fast. Um that this is helpful. Like it's like the make local mod config for for QMU basically. And it it sometimes it's really helpful because it allows you to save a lot of time also in the build for the build part. Um, can Virtio FS handle? Okay, Virtio FS with uh, cross architecture is kind of painful because you need to install Virtio FSD in the chi root that you use as the root FS, and right now it just fall back to, um, if you use this dash root, yes, it fall back to 9PFS. So, but that that's something that I, yeah, it's something that should be improved. So if someone is interested, that's, that's a cool thing to add, like uh, use Virtio FSD across for different architectures. It's not even that difficult. We just need, you know, to make sure that uh, Virtio FSD is installed in, in the directory that, that in the root is exported into the guest. Um, and yes, as uh, Ricardo is is commenting, like I just tried Arch64 and it works fine without force 9P. It works fine, but I think you're using, you're actually using 9PFS because uh, Virtme, it, Virtme NG itself, if it doesn't find Virtio FS, it will just automatically fall back to uh, 9PFS. That that's probably the reason. Alessandro Ratti, can you do PCI pass through? Yes. Uh, basically, okay, you can do everything that you can do with QMU. Uh, there's like a dash dash QMU dash OPTS, and you can pass like extra options that are just passed to QMU. Uh, but 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 of course that's like the the hard way. Uh, there is actually a a patch, a pull request that I merged, I think, I think it was yesterday even, uh, that adds the support for the NVIDIA GPU uh, pass-through. It's still kind of new, like a little untested, but uh, yeah, it's like if you check, like if you look at Git repository, one of the last commit is is this one to uh, support NVIDIA GPU pass-through. Need more testing, need, needs more uh, uh, documentation probably. But it, we're getting there. <laughs> uh, does it allow me to change the QMU file cracker options? Uh, so yeah, that that's this the slide um, that I was showing. Um, so one of the changes that improved the boot time a lot uh, was to switch to micro VM by default. Uh, micro VM is like a, a special virtual platform derived from file cracker that. Um, it's like it's a minimalist machine, so there's no CPI, no PCI or CPI. Everything is going through Virtio, so it really helps to speed up the boot time, and really helps to reduce the the memory footprint of the VNG instance. Um, and uh, yes, you can choose. Uh, you can specify dash dash disable dash micro VM. And in that case, it will pull back to the like default QMU architecture. 
but otherwise it will try uh, PNG will try to use uh, micro VM just because the boot is faster. There, there are some cases where like if you have special hardware or uh, uh, well, mostly special hardware, I don't see any other reason like uh, but yeah, that or uh, one of the reason to not use micro VM is if you need to run like complex graphic application because th there's also a graph graphic mode. Uh, and in that case, maybe you may need to do like dash dash disable micro VM because something might might not work. Um, yeah, I mentioned like the Virtme ng init already. It's the lightweight init. You can't use this on a generic like it's not a general purpose init. It's a special purpose init designed specifically for Virtme ng, and it replaces the original. Uh, Init script uh, in Bash, uh, and yes, yeah, so that's that's like the improvement of the boot time. Uh, that was tested recently, so the gap is probably bigger uh, because, like, even in Vert me, I did a lot of changes to speed up the boot time. So the the one of the le on the left is not the original Vert me; it's a Vert me already optimized, let's say, for for boot time. And still, I mean, it, it was pretty good because like in 8.5 seconds, I could boot an instance. With boot an instance, I mean that I ran the command. Uh, so did, did I, let me explain this test, how I got, how I got these numbers. The test is run with me and in interactive mode because you can do interactive mode or, uh, sorry, in batch mode. Uh, you can do interactive mode or batch mode. Uh, interact with interactive mode, you just run with me and G and it drops you into a shell and you can do everything you want. Uh, in batch mode, you can pass a command and it will run the command. So boot the kernel, run the command and kill the VM. And then you get the result of the command in, in standard output, standard error and whatnot. Uh, so the boot time in this slide is actually the kernel boot time plus running the user space test or user space command that in this case is a simple uname-r, like show me the kernel version, and stopping the VM. And like in the initial case, it was taking 8.5 seconds. That is pretty fast. After moving to VertIOFS, we basically cut the uh, boot time in half, we go to around five, well, not, not half, but I mean, it's consistent uh, boost. Uh, we go down to 5.5 seconds. Micro VM also allowed to drop uh, like a couple of sec, one second maybe. So four, around 4.6 uh, seconds. And Virtme and G in it helped a lot because now we are like below uh, one second. So we can like start a kernel, boot the whole kernel, run a command, collect the result in less than a second. And it, it's really, I mean, it's really fast. Uh, and you need to think like, so if you're using readme and in, in an interactive mode and you need to do just one test, it's not that important to go so fast. But if you think about using readme and like on a large scale, to do again, integration te continuous integration testing, or you do, you use this in, in your like uh, testing pipeline and whatnot. I mean, having this fast boot time can be significant and help you to speed up all your testing. It can help you also to save power. I uh, at OSPM, I think it was OSPM in two thousand nineteen. I'm, I'm not sure, but. Yeah, a, a conference I presented with me and G is a tool uh, to uh, like save energy uh, because actually the, the testing time was so fast that I could, I mean, it, it it's easy to prove that you can save energy because you don't have the uh, all the redeployment and rebooting that are happening. Um, and okay, just so that that's clear, uh, let me show you like, um, let me share the console again. Uh, let's go here. Uh, share. 
And there you go. Because I, I keep mentioning like interactive mode uh, or, or batch mode, and it's not very clear. So this is like the one of the latest kernel. It's actually the SCADEX branch, but whatever. It's just a kernel that I just recompiled. And what I need to do to test the kernel, I run VNG. And now I am inside uh, this kernel. And I mean, I see, I see the same file system. I can, yeah, the PPS is, is uh, in, instead is like, it's, it's a guess, so it's a virtual machine. I don't see the processes in my host, uh, but I can, let's say, I can read my emails. Let's find, uh, uh, I don't know, HTML. Okay, that's the uh, Linux kernel mailing list archive of 2023, whatever. I can read emails, I can delete them. Because uh, because all the writes are ephemeral, so I can do all the testing that I want. And if I exit, everything is destroyed. And uh, you know, I can also read the same emails and they are back because they're not actually touched. Uh, the other mode is the batch mode where I run like a command. Let's measure the time as well. Uh, so this is like put in the kernel, run a command, returning. So it's, now it's, it's not less than a second because there's the whole streaming going on. Uh, and this computer is not that fast, by the way, but it's still, uh, you know, around uh, 1, 1. 1.6, 1. 1.5, usually 1.6 seconds. And you can see here the, the kernel version. Yeah. Is not the same that runs in my uh, in my host. My host is actually running a six nine kernel, and the guest here is running a six eleven. So, so Andre, uh, the... yeah, yeah. So uh, what happens? Say you you went and enabled tracing um, in this mode, um, mm -hmm. echo. You just enable tracing. That also just enabling tracing in the virtual machine is that correct yeah that's that's correct exactly because okay. when you when you do like vng mm -hmm. now okay the, the files are uh shared with the host but procfs correct. and csfs everything is guessed so uh i can like just just to show you i can do uh something like b mm -hmm. who's familiar with this raise your hand I don't see the <laughs> oh, so well, yes, yeah, okay. I'm crashing, right. I, I'm crashing, crashing, everything. Okay. crashing everything, yes. Okay, okay, I don't see the I don't see anything because let me let me do this because it's more more spectacular. Dash V will also show the kernel log because without mm -hmm. dash V it doesn't show the kernel log. If I do uh t dot Caesar Q, okay, let's crash the kernel. Okay, the kernel crashed, but I'm still live so it's not the host it's actually the guest mm -hmm. and uh yeah here i can see the the trace and of course uh, the, the guest is not responding anymore because i it just panicked so i can stop the qme instance with control a x that drops the the qmu session and i'm back in the host um i can also do like um let's say let's re let's redo this one uh and uh let's see if it's in the okay yeah. echo t uh well let's okay sorry dash dash debug that's what i wanted to do uh let's see okay i crashed the kernel but because i started with dash dash debug i can run on another terminal another session i can run vng dash dash gdb and this will attach a debugger to the previous session so i can do like a backtrace or well if i continue nothing happened um, and yeah i can ex explore what happened um so i have the i have all the symbols here another cool cool thing that i can do is to generate a crash dump. Let me see, maybe, maybe I have another one already. Uh, let me remove that. Uh, dump. I can generate a 
a crash dump, this will copy the whole memory of the, uh, the like the RAM uh, from the guest into this file in the host, uh, and I can explore what happens using other tools like like um, let's say Crash or Dragon if you're familiar with those. Um, it's probably gonna take a while because uh, that's like a big. Uh, by default, it uses um, uh, one gig of RAM, so the, the dump is taking a while. And while it's generating the dump, let me take a look at the questions. Uh, does Weird MeNG build a latest QMU KVM or it uses a built binary? It, it uses the QMU that is in your distro, so it's a built in binary. Uh, it doesn't ship its own QMU. Uh, so, yeah. It requires QMU, so if you don't have QMU, it doesn't work. But like most of the distro are shipping VirtMeNG, and if you install the package, you will get all the dependencies automatically. Um, Rajat, is there any detailed documentation that you point me out for the uh, dash dash root flag option? Uh, if you, well, it's like, let me see. Dash dash help. Uh, let me see what you have here. Ah, okay. Well, let's go back to the example. I I can kill the VM because I generate, I did the dump. And I don't know, I can do crash, uh, use crash, for example, to read the dump. Uh, uh, and even if I stop the VM, now I can, uh, let's see, if it, okay, I can, I can see the D message. Uh, I can do PS. Uh, from the message, I can see, like, let's say, where's the last? Uh, yeah, that's, of course, that's panic. Let's do GDB list. Uh, this symbol, and I can see, like, the C code where you know, the panic is it happened, the problem happened, it tells me like the file and the line number. Uh, and then I, from here, it's not with me and G anymore. It's GDB and crash and whatnot, other, other tools. But I just wanted to show you like, you, if you use with me and G to generate a dump, then you can use other, all the standard debugging tools to explore the, the crash dump. dump. Uh, on the root op root flag option, I think dash dash help should, should more or less should tell you more or less how to use that. Um, let me see. Where uh, maybe we if we do uh, yeah, there, there's not much to say honestly. Like you, you pass a, a directory, and uh, yeah, it will use this directory instead of the real root on the host but yeah if, if uh, yeah if you have questions uh, yeah, just just you can reach out to me or uh, do a more specific question uh mohan can you also do nested vms for instance if my host is itself a linux vm maybe running on windows yes you can do that and let, let me tell you a, a really funny story <laughs> Because so there was a, a an ex coworker of mine that at some point he wanted to try with me and G, and and I so ex, I explained him how to do that and 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 how to set up everything. It's actually pretty easy. I mean, you just install the package and you go. Uh, and then he came to me and it was like, "Why well, the G is not working?" I, okay, let well let's take a look. We we sit down together and we see what's going on, and. I am honest, I, I think we spent like more than 10 minutes trying to figure out why the why it was failing with a permission error. And I was like, never seen this before, why it's happening. So the whole time he was already inside WeirdMeNG <laughs> and he was trying to run WeirdMeNG inside WeirdMeNG and he didn't realize it was inside WeirdMeNG. And I thought that was like a great success because the goal of the project was to like uh, give the impression to run inside the host. <laughs> so that was like big success. But we also, real we also realized that we were not supporting nested virtualization. So I added the support and now you can, uh, yeah, you can do like, uh, let's say, uh, BNG 
uh, and now I'm inside VirtBNG, and I can run VNG again, but there, there's a caveat here. I need to use force 9p in this specific case um, because, uh, yeah, because they're, they're, I'm running out of RAM, basically. I don't have enough RAM otherwise to start the, the other instance. So I, I can do nested weird me and Gs. In your case though, you, what you wanna do, like you have a VM and run weird me and G inside the VM, you can do that. You don't need the force 9P special option. That's needed only if you do nested VNG instances because the Virt IOFS uh, will actually need a portion of RAM to do the the, the IO, to bypass the IO. Um, so yeah, that that's that's the that's the use case. Uh, okay, let me go back to the slides. And uh, here, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, speaking of of nested VMs, another useful use case for VirtMeNG is that you can use VirtMeNG inside Docker. And that's really useful because you can run, you can start a container, and let's say you need to test uh, a specific. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You have an application or a test, and uh, uh, you need to run that test with a specific kernel. Then you can use virtmeng inside Docker, and to like virtualize the container file system, but uh, use any arbitrary kernel. It can be a recompiled kernel. It can be a stock kernel from a different distro can be an upstream kernel whatever and uh, this is really this is really useful on github for example because github uh, if you uh, if you are familiar well like with the github um, workflows um, you can create basically um, actions depending on like if you create a new pull request uh, or you create uh, I don't know you push something, you want to trigger some tests, some automated tests. Then you can use virtmeng either to like recompile the kernel and run the test or uh, like pick an arbitrary kernel and run a test with that specific kernel. Um, so, okay, I need to go back to the shell now, sorry, because I, 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 I want to show you something. Um, while you're doing that, it looks like people are asking about a couple of things about if you were to um, install some new uh, package in your Word um, ng, uh, Word me ng installation, what happens? If you install a package, it's it will install the package, uh, but the, the changes are ephemeral, if you remember. So you can do like, okay, let's do this. First of all, I need the network because by default mm -hmm. you don't have the network. So I need to do uh sorry the opposite net user. Uh now I I have the network and I can do up um running deb and uh, running Ubuntu in this case. I can apt update uh and this will fetch like the updated package metadata, um, and I can I don't know apt install the. Uh, what can I install? Get me ng. Actually, let me do this. Apt uh, remove get me ng. Oh, it's not installed. Great, because I'm using the the source, the one from the source code. So let let's up up install get me ng. Uh, for some reasons it does. Oh, because I need to complete apt update. Maybe. Okay, let's do that. But yeah, you you can install packages. You will see the pa new packages inside the guest, but the changes are not applied to the host because everything is ephemeral. Uh, so so uh, one word of caution would be, I probably will do something like this. I would uh, start <laughs> working in Volt and G and then start making uh, making source code changes and G make a bunch of changes and then exit. And then I go, I lost all my changes. My new patch is gone. That's, so just be careful. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, you know, that's that's the reason why. Uh, well, let, let me show you this. So run, I'm running another VNG instance. 
you know why there is this host name just for why <laughs> just for this reason to someone complain like oh i lost all the changes because i was inside with me and and i didn't realize so at, at this so to, to prevent that we added the initial banner this one was added because of that and the host name and we decided to change the host name because by default it was showing the same host name, host name as the host mm -hmm. and it was more of a pain than than, than a benefit um uh, and yeah so why that, that's why we decided to do that um okay this is taking a while let's see if there are other questions in the meantime um rm dash rf dash root yes you can do you can remove everything and uh, probably the guest will complain <laughs> about that you will lose the guest but the host will be fine make sure that you run that when you are in the guest and not the host so <laughs> that can be important um if the idea is like fork a system from host but without uh, exactly same read w uh, okay, read write file system. Will system D system five work? So that's uh, VirdmNG doesn't support system D. I want to add that at some point, uh, uh, but the only reason now that system D is not supported is because I want a really fast boot, and if I move to system D, uh, it. Yeah, it's not, it's not as fast as having like the Virtu ng in it. Of course, that prevents you to uh, do to run tests uh, that require daemons or interactions with systemd. Uh, and but yeah, in that case, you can you know you can just install a regular VM and, and do that. Uh, but I'm I'm yeah, it's one. It's in the to do in the to do to do list. Um, I want to. Make maybe make that an option, like to boot and use systemd instead of with me and G in it, or maybe both. Uh, it it's kind of tricky. Like if you fork your host, uh, you need to hide certain directories of systemd because otherwise, if you you know if you fork your host and you're inside the guest uh, and you try to start systemd, systemd is going to complain because it it will find a, a previous state that is actually the state on the host and it will fail to start. So uh, that, there's a trick, you know, you can create empty directories and do bind mounting those directories to hide the files. Um, I'm actually doing that for like the, for example, for, to hide the packaging directories and whatnot. Um, but, but, but yeah, that's the way. Okay, this is taking too long. Uh, let me see if I can install. Maybe I can re reinstall bash, let's say. Just or go I with can... something simpler like I spell or, you know, C scope. Oh. Uh, yeah, because it's, so in, it needs to complete apt update. Mm -hmm. Because, like, it, so mm -hmm. in order to be able to support uh, so that's var lib apt is one of the directories that is hidden so it's basically cleared so that you your package manager can actually work on that uh because otherwise you may find like an inconsistent it, it will find an inconsistent state so i need to re-download everything but anyway you you can you can install packages as long as you're uh you know uh, uh, i don't know why it's taking so long long now honestly Let's see, Looks like there are more time. questions in the chat. Yeah, let um, me see. Um, is it possible to create a snap? Oh, wait, maybe I skipped something. Let me see. Um, uh, what if we install app packages and execute the app? Will the application crash if we exit as the file system is temporary? Uh, no, okay. So if you install a package and you run the app, uh, uh, everything will be on the file system. So the app app works. If you exit and you run virtmng again, you won't see. You will not see the app there because everything is reverted back to your host file system. So you need to reinstall again. Um, there's actually an option that I 
I'm always skeptical to mention because it's a little dangerous and it's uh, dash dash RW. Uh, that allows you to like ex to to export the the host file system in read write mode. Never ever use that, please, because <laughs> that's like uh, it's kind of dangerous. Uh, but but in that case, you actually have like a full access to your host file system. It, it, it doesn't crash anything because everything happens via VirtaUFS and you won't rewrite system files because remember that VNG run as regular user. So that, there's also another trick to allow that, uh, meaning that you see like user, lib, var, whatever, but if you export the file system in read-write mode and you try to write on them, like in etc passwd or etc something, uh, the, the IO operation will fail because you, your regular user on the host doesn't have the permission to write them. So the guest, even if you're root inside the guest, you won't be able to write uh, those files uh, in the, in the uh, privileged file system in the host. And, uh, but you will be able to mess up with your home directory, for example. Everything that regular user can do on the host can be done from the guest. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, that's failed too, but maybe now let me see if we, if we can install something. Ah, uh, no. E, I spell, huh? so I suggested this one. Uh, let me see. I, I suggested think. it, but it looks like you could just do something else. Like you know, you know what I you think know. we <clears throat> uh, we oh we may have. So the fact that we see this means that we we don't have enough RAM. <laughs> we actually huh, so okay. all the rise that happened were hap are happening in RAM. So if you don't give enough right. RAM to your VM, you may eat this this error. Like right? right. So I I need to restart again. But anyway, I'll. Maybe I'll, I'll post an example in the on the GitHub page for about installing a package. Um, that's probably easier. Um, what what test did you run inside the VM created using VirtMNG to compare uh, default kernel scheduler and and SX Rust? So SX Rustling is is another project. Um, uh, I, I actually didn't use VirtMNG for that because the for the scheduler uh, or, or better. Sometimes I use VirtMNG to test custom schedulers. Um, and uh, the, the, so the my usual workflow is actually, I, I can show you, is actually this one. I run everything inside Pmax. Uh, so let's see. Oh, look at that. I <laughs> Uh, not sure if you noticed, but I typed exit twice. So we were actually running VirtMNG inside VirtMNG. That I did the same mistake. Uh, maybe that was the reason why the uh, install, why we, we ran out of RAM. Uh, but but anyway, um, yeah, what what I do is, um, yes, I run, I run VirtMNG uh, and I create an instance. And then I run Tmax inside VirtMNG. And in one session, I let me see if I have a scheduler compiled here. Uh, X, uh, uh, build uh, release. Uh, uh, yeah, this okay. Uh, yeah, I can't run the, the scheduler because I don't have the right SCADX3. I, sh I need to recompile the kernel, or, or I can use uh, my stock so I can use the kernel from the distro basically if I run dash r with no arguments it will use the current running kernel and so that's like I forked the my host system using the same kernel uh, so this is really an exact copy of my of my host I run tmax uh, and inside Tmax now I can uh, do uh, build release. Yeah, B I can run like BPF land. This is a custom scheduler based on SCADX, for example. And here I can run my test. I would say stress ng, for example. 
and uh yeah i don't know uh let's do well actually let's do this let me show you h top uh, and uh that's kind of messy here but down here yeah but basically that that's what i do i create i use tmax to create multiple sessions and i run commands and everything all of this is happening inside with me and g then i quit and i'm back into the host uh that, that's the workflow and yeah and so another use case i think i have a slide for that but since i'm here in the console Another interesting use case is to run a case of test. Uh, Shua knows about, do you know about case of test? <laughs> so, for example, well, I just heard uh, about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, for example, let me see if I have him. Okay, I don't have in my history. Maybe I can. Um, yeah, let me copy this one, for example, from the slides. Okay, that, that was in, in a slide. Uh, I can run like the Futex self test. This is actually running uh, inside with me and G. Uh, should take, I don't know, 10 seconds to complete, maybe. Uh, yes. And uh, let's see. Sorry. Whoop. So, ah, okay. I'm, I'm not inside too much. So I can scroll up. Uh, no. Okay. Let's do that. Um, basically, so this is the command that I would run on my host. If I do this, maybe maybe let's add dash v to make sure that we to show that we are actually booting inside a different kernel. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's the you may have seen like the the kernel booting up here. That's the right. boot message, and then the self test runs, uh, and at some point it completes uh, and it stops the VM. Yeah, power and <laughs> Exactly. Cool thing that I can do is to play with standard input, standard output, and some standard error. Uh, so if I do like standard error to temp kernel log, for example, I, I can like see the, so the standard, the, the kernel message in the guest will be redirected to the a standard error in the host, and I can redirect into a file. So now in temp kernel log, I see the, the, the kernel message. And in standard output, I get the actual message. So I can pipe, like uh, I can pipe into another command uh, or do stuff like this. And I, I actually have slides for that. Maybe I can show you the slides. So some of the cool uh, things would be with this, um, if you're running any, sometimes you don't want to run, I run into this house uh, when I'm applying patches and running, making sure my uh, repo is good before I send full request. Um, I don't always want to run um, the destructive tests. So mm -hmm. on my system, right? So I'm careful. Um, I have to, I'll go to a test system. So now I could just pull the request and then, just run it, run all the destructive yeah, tasks yeah. right on my uh, system that I'm on, the same one I'm going to be sending pull requests from. So there are yeah, exactly. quite a few destructive tests in uh, self-tests that um, the what MG will enable me to do. Exactly, exactly. And the, the cool thing is that, uh, so by default, if you run in batch mode, it goes in, in it, it runs everything as root, so it, it but but it's root in the guest. So guest. Uh, that, that works. Uh, if you, sometimes for some cell, uh, case of test, you may need the network. So in that case, you may have to specify like pass special options like dash dash net the user, for example. Uh, Another thing about KSL test is uh, it everything works as long as you have the right config options that are mm -hmm. required by the test, of course. So if you use BertMeNG to build a, a minimal kernel, uh, not all the KSL tests will work, of course, because you may miss like all the net, for example, the BPF net filter does require uh, a lot of config options. But as long as you have your own config with everything that you need, 
or as long as you have your regular kernel build process uh, and you use VertMeNG just for the testing part, not for the build part, technically, theoretically, all the all the KCL tests that you run your in your host should should run as fine uh, in in the guest. Uh, so yeah, that that that's quite useful. And we were actually using that. I was using that a lot in um, when I was maintaining the the unstable kernel in uh, in, in Ubuntu. Uh, the case of tests were a, a big part of the whole testing, and uh, sometimes I mean it was kind of complicated to run all the safe like to schedule a job to run all the case of tests in our testing infrastructure. So I was just running with me and all the case of tests inside with me and G in my own desktop and it was like a lot faster and yeah. Can you run KUnit as well? Do you have you played with that? Um, yeah, you, you, yeah, you... yeah, 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 yeah. You you can do that. I mean, you can load modules, so you can run kernel code, a, a, anything that you can do in inside a QMU VM. You you can do that in inside me and G because at the end it's just it's just QMU. There's nothing more. It's QMU with some extra options and with a, a custom init script to prepare like the whole file system and do the, the file system trick. Um, and yeah, and the other thing is like the redirection of standard input, standard output, standard error. Uh, let me show this. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the slide that I was searching. Um, yeah, let's go to the examples because they're they're interesting and. And then we we can maybe we can see some of them like live. Uh, so this one is like how I usually build a, a kernel. I mean, can, inside can you the... share slides? I think. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that may maybe that's helpful. Uh, okay, <laughs> I was basically doing a presentation for myself. Sorry. Okay, now now you all see the slides. Ah uh, yes. Okay. okay. Yes, that's um. Yeah, that was the, uh, what What can I do? Okay, that's the what can I do part. That's already started because uh, I was showing something interactively, but uh, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, the very basic thing is, is the building. Uh, it's like kind of a make, you can use BirdMeNG kind of a make local mod config. So this without any option, it will, uh, and assuming you have not built the kernel already. So this is like a fresh clone, the uh, uh, Linux Git repository. Uh, you can run VNG dash B. Uh, th this one is optional. I'm us usually using this because I'm using an external builder, and that it's it's quite of a beefy machine. But even then, I mean, it the the whole build is like a fresh build. Uh, it takes only one minute and a half, and after this one minute and a half, I can VNG and get into the kernel. And this is like the bare minimal, using the bare minimal config uh, automatically generated by VertMeNG. Um, and it, when you use an external build there, what it does, it um, it's doing a git push. Of course, you need of course you need SSH access. Uh, it's doing a git push to the remote host. Then it runs the build. On the remote host, uh, builds everything there. In this case, NV Builder. Uh, when it's done, it doesn't copy everything back. Like it doesn't copy all the binary artifacts, but it only it's running our sync and it only syncs the actual binaries that you need. So let's say you are on x86, it will sync back the the BZ image and the KO files, and that's it. Uh, so even if you are on a remote host and you produce like a ton of data of, of build data and temporary object files, uh, they will be skipped. Um, so that, that's really useful. I wanted to mention this because, um, like, and if you build locally, of course, you don't, you don't need this part and you will have everything locally and it's also fast. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I like to mention that it's kind of a local mod config because, uh, again, make local mod config. So one, once uh, Steven Rosted was the one that added make local mod config. And once he told me like one of the 
kernel changes that he's most proud of uh, is the make local mod config because it allowed people to do fast testing. Like a, a local mod config will generate a config like specific for your running system. And that helps you to reduce like a lot the the build the build time, but it will it also uh, you can also get rid of the whole pain of you, you know now I need to figure out what kind of config option I need to enable and what not to uh, run this kernel in my in my live system. So uh, that's that's kind of the same with inside KVM. So if you need a minimal kernel that runs inside KVM. You can use uh, virtmng to do that. Uh, you, we, you, you have seen how to, you know, you can run VNG and you drop into a, an interactive shell. Um, so that's like uh, boot time. Uh, you, I've also showed this already, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was more than one second now, but probably because I'm streaming. So it's not like a completely uh, idle system. Uh, but still, we were able to get like uh, run a command in like one point six seconds. That's that's not bad. Um, the KSL test uh, that's uh, yeah shown already. That I think I I did yeah I did the same the same self test. Um, that's another interesting use case for uh, uh, for BitMNG as as Shua pointed out. Like before sending a patch, you want to run a, a KSL test. Uh, you don't have to deploy the kernel on a separate test system. You can just use the same system and, and run the command, run the self test inside with me and G. Uh, so this is another interesting uh, use case that I wanted to show is my, so that, that's kind of my typical uh, FKML workflow. Uh, the FKML is the Linux kernel mailing list. And uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with B4, Raise your hand, even if I don't see that, if you're familiar with before. Before is a tool that allows you to download a patch from the mailing archives or, or a patch set, if it's, even if it's multiple patch. And the shadzam command is very useful because you pass the link and before we'll apply the whole patch set to your tree. Uh, so in this case, I just picked a random patch. I don't even remember what this patch is, but uh, passing this command will apply uh, this. Uh, it's just a single patch, work you clear, work or whatever. Uh, the patch is applied, and now I can recompile the kernel using the command that I showed earlier, um, using the external builder. Again, it takes um, around. Uh, one minute, one minute, two minutes. I have the kernel back uh, and I run with me ng the command and I'm and I can test the patch. So that's usually what I do when I need to test a patch. Uh, and it's funny to notice that like applying the patch uh, here takes almost as long as te as testing the kernel. Of course, there's the build in between that takes longer because it's like the whole kernel build. Uh, and, but the, the cool thing is like, uh, if you, so that was a fresh build, but if you apply another patch that only changes like a few files, uh, using an external builder uh, is, is like, you, you don't have it because everything is on the external builder. So it will reuse the same build directory. So it will not recompile everything. Uh, that's why, like, uh, when you do git bisect, uh, even if you're on a, an external builder, this is very uh, fast because you, you have, if you have small changes in between the the different steps, uh, it will only recompile the, the the delta, and it will only r sync back the delta. Uh, so that that can be fast as well. Um, let's see if. Let me let me grab some questions because I'm, I'm I'm moving fast and uh, let's see maybe in chat. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, Vitamin G from a Docker container. Oh yes, Matthew. Oh yeah, thank you, Matthew, for the uh, 
telling about the use case of Vertme inside Docker. I think, yeah, I think that's very powerful. Like being able to use Vertme NG uh, in, in a Docker container with GitHub. We use that. We use that with uh, Skidex um, and many other many other projects are using that, and it's really really convenient. Um, uh, yes. Up, uh, so up to update failing likely because no space left. On uh, to Shar say that uh, likely because there's no space left on device. That was actually funny because I was actually running VirtMeNG inside VirtMeNG, so I, I ran out of memory because of that. I I didn't realize that I was uh, that I was using nested v VNG. Uh, the read write mode is interesting if you're using a VNG from a Docker container, Matthew. Exactly, that's the use case. The, that's the precise use case for the matter. Uh, people. Uh, in Matter, they run a container and they use virtmeng dash dash um, read write in read write mode because they can uh, they generate some files and they can collect the the generated files uh, after um, after the run. So yeah. Um, okay. What are system requirements? Uh. Not not much. I mean, you, if you need the, to use the build stuff, you just need to install GCC, make, and uh, what what is called build essentials in, in Ubuntu Debian. Other distro may have other virtual packages, but um, just need that. And for the run part, running VNG, like the virtualization part, you just need QEMU. And, and Virtaio FSD, but that's that's optional. I mean, Virta, if you don't have Virtaio FSD installed, uh, VirtmeNG will fall back to nine PFS. So it's 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 lower, but it's working. Um, why would someone would use VirtmeNG with Virtme inside Docker? Um, uh, so the thing is, like Docker is a lightweight virtualization. Uh, you can uh create like a kind of a partition of your system, but the kernel is still the same. Uh, so if you need to test and use a different kernel, either a recompiled one or any, any other one, uh, you can't use like the lightweight virtualization for that. So running VirtmeNG inside Docker allows you to create a container and also and use virtualization inside the container to pick a specific kernel. You may say, then why don't why not using uh, VirtmeNG directly? Yes, that that's of course that, that that would be better. But there are some cloud environments, for example, GitHub. Uh, GitHub automatically creates like a Docker and run your your GitHub action inside Docker. So in that case, you, you don't have a way to pick an arbitrary kernel, and VirtmeNG can be a way to like run uh, inside that cloud environment, picking arbitrary kernels. Uh, if I am inside the guest and have not used any flags to enable writing, would it be possible to make a permanent change? Uh, tech, theoretically, uh, yes, it's possible, uh, but uh, you know, if you are, if you, let's say you enable network, you can have like uh, you can communicate with the host over network, so you can use maybe you can use a network file system like NFS for example, and you can mount uh, an NFS exported uh, directory from the host into the guest, and then you can like dump all the files that you want in there or exchange files. Or otherwise, I mean it's easier if you just use the dash dash rwdir or are oh dear. So yeah, um, that's that's the way. Um, yeah, I think we are we are kind of running out of time. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna show a couple of other like just one example that I think is curious. So that's like a huge pipeline of Vietme ng instances, all pipe together, like the standard output of one instance is sent to the standard input of another instance and so on and so on. 
Uh, and at the end, I run Cow Says, just a silly program that shows a cow in ASCII art uh, with like with an output. <laughs> I love Cow Say, okay? <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, so what it's doing, I'm actually running seven instances in parallel, all running, uh, you name the char, collecting the output and assembling everything together, sent into pipe to Cow Say. And I can run this command in like 4.71 seconds, like five, almost five seconds. So that's really useful when you need to do like mass test on different kernels. And another thing that I wanted to show you is if you specify with dash R uh, an upstream tag, uh, like in this case, v611rc1, v611rc2, these are upstream tags. virtmng in this case, will download the kernel from the Ubuntu uh, mainline builds. And this is actually the upstream v611rc2 recompile using the uh, Ubuntu config. So it's a, like a general purpose kernel that has all the features that you need. And there's no special Ubuntu patches, it's just upstream, upstream kernel versions, the, the actual version. And they're pre-compiled kernels. So this is really fast and is really useful when you need to, you know, at some point you have a regression and you're like, oh, when this regression was added. So you can like go back with the upstream kernels and see if it was added like in a specific version or if, you know, you may want to go back in time or forward in time and see, oh, will it be fixed in like in the next, in the next Linux release. So that, that's really useful. And I just wanted to mention this um, debugging. I showed that there's also a graphic mode, as you can see here, and you can do crazy things like playing YouTube or playing video games. I don't recommend that, <laughs> but it's possible. And again, CI CD is, is uh, we got recrawled. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. But again, to recap everything, because we're running out of time, I want to like get some time for the last questions. That's, these are the main goals for VirtMeNG, to lower the barrier of kernel development and provide a fast edit, compile, run, or test iterations. And yeah, consider to use these in, in CI, CD, because uh, that, that might be interesting. Some future plans, references, if you, you know, the page of the project and do articles mentioning Virtme and G on Linux Weekly News. And that's the last slide. Let's see if there are there are questions uh, on the Q. I don't see anything in the QA. Um, let's see. Do you have a workflow to do Git bisect? Well, it's just, you know, uh, use Git bisect and then VNG dash dash build every single step and VNG and the command that you need to run, uh, VNG dash dash command that you need to run. That, that's very easy. Uh, and then you, you do, you know, git by sec good, git by sec bad as usual. Um, uh, thanks for, okay, th th thank you, Matthew. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let's see. Okay, Tushar is responding. I'll, checking if the, oh, is it possible to use C cache? Yes, so when you do VNG dash dash build, uh, you can actually pass uh, environment variable afterwards. So you can also say, let's say, uh, CC equal Clang, and you can compile the kernel with Clang instead of GCC, or yeah, you can pass all the options that you will usually pass uh, uh, to make. And ah yes, I see some uh, wonder Larson. Uh, is there a way to pass O equal? Yes, that uh, the same answer. You can pass environment variables or options that you would usually pass to make. Um, I think I answered all the questions. Maybe. I'm I'm uh, sc scrolling through as well. Just yeah, yeah. I'm also. 
Uh, oh. So Ricardo came back and said that um, he was the one that is doing cross compile. He asked the cross compile question. I think um, that one is uh, he confirmed a Arch sixty four was booted with nine feepal back. Can you please elaborate what cross root fs needs to boot with word iofs? I think he's still trying to figure out how to boot with word io in a cross environment. Yeah, so if you want to use word iofs. Technically, you just need the Virtio FSD installed in the chi root that you're using, uh, uh, that you're passing as dash dash root. Uh, I'm trying to think it might not work because I think there's right now there's actually a, 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 an explicit logic. I have to look at the code, but there's an explicit logic in the code to say disable Virtio FS if you're doing like a cross arch. So you may need to look at virdme uh, virdme underscore ng run dot pi, because uh, there might be like an actual like exclude the virtio fs if you're running uh, like across arch and it automatically falls back into it actually forces nine pfs, but yeah that that's why I mentioned earlier like it's it's a change that uh, I mean it's a contribution that would be nice if someone is interested it should be fairly easy. Uh, or I'm I may just do that as soon as I find some time I, I may just add like the virtual UFS support for cross ar architecture. Looks like there is one question. I you might have answered this, Andre. If you did, uh, we can skip it. Is it possible to create a snap of all our changes and apply to the next Wirt me ng instance? Uh yeah, that's an interesting, would be an interesting feature. It's so right now it's not possible, uh, just because like all the delta, so all the changes are going into tempfs. But it, it would be nice to be able to, let's say, specify because uh, you know, uh, overlay fs as uh, the concept of you know the, the base deer and the work deer and the upper deer. But basically, you have the base deer and the work deer that contains the delta. So uh, maybe using, let's say, uh, a separate read-write exported deer for the work deer, we would be able to preserve the delta and save somewhere on the host and maybe start another VM, another VNG instance, reusing the same delta that will be remounted over, basically preserving the overlay FS changes. That's, it's not, uh, I mean, this, this is not uh, implemented yet. It would be a nice feature, a nice, nice contribution again. Um, yeah, that's that's nice, nice suggestion. I'll take a look at that, or if someone is interested, it would be a nice addition to, to VirtmeNG. Could nice you question. simply could you simply R sync whatever? Uh, uh, yeah, answer. that's an, it's you can another, just do an R sync, I suppose, right? It, yeah, it should work. Uh, I, you know, you need to R sync from RAM into the host. I think it would be easier to just you know pass uh mount pass a read write director in the in the in the guest and use that. But R sync yeah, is another option. Definitely, but if you could R sync to an, mm -hmm. um, a different, I mean, you don't want to corrupt your host probably, just rsync yeah. and generate a tarball and you potentially could go that yeah, route. Yeah, 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 because like everything, yes, all the work deals are, are saved inside the guest in var temp. So var temp path, for example, var temp slash etc will contain all the differences from uh, the, the host slash etc. Mm -hmm. So if right. you are seeing that, you create a tarball of that, then you like kill the instance, you start another VNG instance, you are seeing back, you unpack everything, uh, and you have resumed uh, the delta, theoretically. I think there is one question. Uh, sorry, um, Candice, uh, do we have one more minute to answer this last question? I think this probably isn't answered. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. That's no problem at all. And Andre, if you have time. Yeah, too, I, yeah I have time. Okay. I have time. Um, so there is a question about 
um, change, making changes to SCX central scheduler. And I want to see whether my changes have any benefits. Can I use Voltengi's salt run benchmark in spinning multiple VMs? Uh, okay, let it, me see if I find it's a timestamp oh, okay. 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. oh, no. I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, SCX central scheduler. I want to see whether my changes have any benefit. Can I use with me to sort run benchmark spinning multiple VMs? So I, so I don't understand if you want to run like multiple VMs inside VirtMNG. Uh, that uh, it works. Well, I guess it works, even even if that's the case. Um, so testing schedulers, like uh, for example, SCX Central. Uh, SCX Central is a sch special scheduler in, in SCADEX uh, that uh, basically disables the ticks uh, across all the CPUs and it keeps uh, only the first CPU as the one the, uh, as the master to do all the scheduling. Um, it's uh, so it's designed to be a scheduler for virtual machines. So I understand when you say like spinning multiple VMs, that's probably the reason. Uh, testing inside a virtual machine, you can totally test uh, schedulers and measure performances in, and do performance tests inside a VM. Uh, of course, you get you may get less performance than a, running in a bare metal, but Again, if you do comparisons with different changes, uh, this you know the, the same delta that you usually see on the bare metal, you're expecting to see if there are benefits or not also inside a virtual machine. Timing might be different, systems are different. So depending on the changes that you do, you may get different results. But that that's like, it happens even if you move from a bare metal to a different bare metal. Because the architecture is different, you may have different timing and different results. Um, the, the virtual machine, the, the VM layer itself doesn't uh, block you to do any kind of testing, even if it's like nested VMs and whatnot. So I would say, yes, you, you, you can definitely do that. Um, and usually, like, uh, for example, one of the th interesting things that we found using VirtMNG to test the schedulers in SCADEX was that as soon as we finished to set up the whole CI CD on GitHub using VirtMNG, we triggered, I think we, we found like more than 20 bugs that we couldn't see before just by moving into a different environment. But it's not that the not because of the virtualization, but just because it was like different timing, different environment. And uh, so, yeah, it's it was really useful. Like we could find a lot of bugs. Um, so yeah, not, it's not just performance. It's sometimes that, that's useful also to just have a different environment with different kernels and more opportunities to see bugs. I hope I answered the question. Yes, I think that that's that, that's a good point. Uh, in because bare metal has different characteristics, all of the architectures have different characteristics. So that's one of the reasons some people do test on real hardware because um, that's where you see some set of problems. And like you're saying, virtualization with what me and G, you have seen lots of problems so on with the schedulers. So that's exactly why our kernel development and testing. Um, uh, works very well because we test using various workflows, various uh, environment and environments and such. So I think to say that's what good about our open source style testing because we test them all on all. Exactly. So thank the di different differentiation of tests like over e multiple scenarios. Yes. Exactly. So one word of caution with the no local mod config, it will generate configuration based on your LS mod. So what you're getting is whatever is just loaded on your system. So you are getting a limited set, uh, which is great. But just in case, if that particular module that you might be using is not currently loaded, it won't be built. Uh, so just, just to keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, and so thank you. Thank you. Unless there are any questions, I think we are, we took yeah, a lot of you your for, time, Andre. Yeah, 
thank you for having me. It was nice and I enjoyed that. I hope the audience found this useful. And yeah, if you find bugs or issues or have questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime or the, you know, the GitHub page and whatnot. So yeah, thanks. Thank you, Andre and Chua, for your time today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today, and a copy of the presentation slides will be added to the Linux Foundation website. We hope you join us for future mentorship sessions. Have a wonderful day.